All right. Welcome to another episode of Comic Book Squares. Uh, we're going to do another interview uh, today. My name's Shane. I'm Paul. I'm Ben. And I'm Mike. Let's get this show started. All right. Well, George, welcome to the show. Just uh, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, why don't you do me a favor and just tell uh, the viewers a little bit about yourself and about your project? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is George McHale. Uh, I'm a comic book writer from uh, Canada. Uh, my series Resilient won Best Comic Book from Sequential Magazine last year. And uh, uh, right now I have a Kickstarter on uh, for my uh, Source Point Press series. It's called Cover of Darkness, which is kind of like Game of Thrones meets Universal Monsters. It's about a family in medieval Romania that gets separated from each other and they encounter vampires, werewolves, the mummy, creature from the Black Lagoon, and a steampunk Atlantean Frankenstein. It's about their journey back to each other. And right now we have a, a Kickstarter for the hardcover and for a card game. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Very <laughs> cool. I was looking through the Kickstarter. I mean, uh, it, it, you know, the card game really uh, struck me, which is because I'm, I'm kind of working on a card game uh, of my own. And so I thought I thought that was really an interesting uh, twist to add into your uh, you know repertoire for the for the book, because normally when you see a, a Kickstarter for a comic, um, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody add a card game element to it. What what was the impetus for that? Uh, I've always loved making games um, my dad used to make games for me when i was like a little boy and uh, and then i used to like make my own games as a kid with like x-men trading cards and i had like little adventures <laughs> we'd go on and then i started making g games for my daughter and then one day we were kind of putting together uh a game for uh a four cover of darkness uh, just me and her and uh, we started off with like little cue cards and we'd write down what each card did and and then we got the art in there um, but it, it came from this old game called golf, which uh, you play with like playing cards and you have to make pairs to like even out your score down to zero and you get cards dealt to you and they're face down and you're only allowed to look at them once. And then you have to try and remember where all the cards are and make pairs from them. And we've taken that basic idea and kind of reverse engineered it. Uh, and added in like special cards, like a gravedigger card where you can dig through the, the discard pile and get the card that you need or a goblin card where you can steal from someone else. So it's just a fun game that we made together. Um, that's, you know, has its kind of origins based off of this classic game that is like super solid and fun to play, but we've kind of put our own twist on it. No, that's awesome. I thought the the artwork on the cards looks just fantastic. The cards themselves. I mean, it looks. I mean, if I if I would have known any better, I would have thought that 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 game in and of itself could have been its own Kickstarter. I mean, it just looks really professional. So you know, congratulations on, on that. Um, yeah, I, I love it, and I love the fact that you decided to go. It look it looks like you went with tarot card uh, size instead of a traditional um, like playing card size. Yeah, well, because the all the artwork is kind of artwork from the comic books. And, you know, and also like we've taken like some concept art and like repurposed that to be card art or some alternative covers that weren't released. But it's all uh, beautifully drawn by our series artist, MJ Hiblin. Uh, and I thought, like, why not go tarot card? Because we're dealing with like monsters. And so it kind of gives kind of like a spooky element to it. But then also it's just a bigger card. So you get to enjoy the art that much more. Cool. That makes sense with the okay. art that you're trying to do as well. Like, so you can better showcase that, you know, if the, you have the littler cards or whatever, it's kind of hard to see all that. And especially the um, MJ's art style with like the fine lines and everything. I think that'd be, I, I, I totally get it. It would probably look better with the, on the tarot card and everything. Yeah, it's a, uh, and it's being uh, produced by the source point press team. They have their own game division. So it's uh, going to be like a professional quality uh, game. And I, I worked with uh, Dave Lentz, who is a graphic designer. He also does lettering for like a lot of the other source point books. Uh, he works on like good boy with Garrett Gunn and like all of Garrett's books. Uh, so fun. yeah, he's been great. That is Very awesome. Cool. Well, George, I wanted to say uh, thanks for wearing the ever other half of the shirt, right? 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> you guys playing Gotham Knights right now, or what? I guess so. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> I've got my Harley cosplay on below the camera line. You can see it. <laughs> Thank you for keeping it there. Yes, yeah, on their off camera. We don't need. We don't need to see that. I'm I'm looking out for you no guys. To see that. <laughs> At your favor. I'll never say I never gave you that. <laughs> so so well, George. I, I, yeah. So George, I, I had to ask. Um, I you know it was uh, um. I, you know, I was the one that picked up uh, the first issue uh, of uh, Cover of Darkness, and we read through it. Um, and so I had to ask you, um, I, I didn't recall seeing any of your other works. Was this was this like your first um, sort of major marketed piece of work, or did you have something before that? Uh, I have a series called Resilient that's being published by Absolute Comics Groups. Uh, they're the guys that do like the White Widow series. Um, unfortunately the release schedule on, on their comics has not been yeah. great. And I, I have like that entire series, uh, completed like the five issues that I'm sitting on, just kind of waiting for them to come out. Um, oh, and like I said earlier, like that first issue did come out into comic book stores. So that was technically my first book out yeah, okay. in comic book stores. Sure. Um, but then issue two hasn't come out in comic book stores yet for yeah. resilient. And so, uh, source point, uh, picked up by my horror series uh cover of darkness and they really pushed it really hard which was nice they gave us like a double page spread in previews yeah. magazine and uh and i think our book was one of their best sellers uh mm-hmm. when the month that came out that's awesome so where, where were you always istri- uh, interested in the horror genre is that you know i mean you because you had so many like you were saying uh before you know you had so many elements in it was that was that kind of the plan or, or did it just sort of, as you were putting the story together, did it just like make sense? Like, you know what would make this story better? If I just threw a <laughs> werewolf in right here and just attacked everybody. <laughs> yeah. So the idea was to do a shared universe of monsters. Um, when I was little, like five years old, I was left home alone. We lived in an apartment building. My parents went to their neighbor's house, also in the building. And they left me with the VHS copy of this movie called Monster Squad. <gasps> where <Yes. laughs> where it's like a group of kids are like tasked with taking down like the classic universal monsters when they come to town right awesome. that movie is like not really scary for adults uh yeah. but for kids it just scared the snot out of me <laughs> and ever <laughs> since then i had like a love hate relationship with those <laughs> classic characters yeah, yeah. and and so i wanted to kind of build my own universe of, of uh, telling stories with those characters yeah, and one thing that's really felt better when you found out that wolfman's got nards that would have made <laughs> <Yes>. you <laughs> <You're right. Yes. laughs> then you know right. it's easy to take down that's right, that's right. <laughs> i found the weak spot yes. <laughs> emphasis on the man in the wolfman <laughs> oh, man. yeah great i mean re- you know really really interesting stuff um you know i i we uh we we enjoyed the first issue. Um, I, you know, I know the other guys were looking forward to the trade. Um, I, I had followed the series through and I kind of followed it to, to conclusion. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, th- I want to say your book was probably one of the first exposures I had to source point. There was some other things that I I'd seen was on the shelf. Um, but, but something like that kind of jumps out to me cause I'm, I'm a big fan of the horror genre myself. I was a latchkey kid left to my own devices, creating my own, you know, <laughs> you know hate havoc and disrepair in the house while the mother was working but fun stuff or or i just hung out with shane and we created hate and discontent out on the road somewhere we, we did all kinds that's of stuff. that's true we don't talk about that that's a different podcast <laughs> that's the podcast we're gonna do after like the I, I would say probably after the uh um you know the uh statute of limitations runs out but anyway yeah. so but uh, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, no, I was, uh, I, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to get your feedback too. Um, is there another, you know, cover of darkness story that's coming after this? Yes, there's, uh, so up next in cover of darkness is coming November 23rd into comic book stores. It's called cover of darkness origins, which is a one shot. And it, uh, follows the origin stories of some of our supporting characters. So okay. like Orlock, the, the older yep. vampire, uh yep, yep. he's uh we he's a an elf warrior defending his kingdom riding on dragon back and he's got a sick niece and he has to go on a mission to try and save her I we also have have a, <laughs> an origin story for our bride of frankenstein character yeah. mary frankenstein and uh this the same restorative properties that brought his her husband back to life um 
reanimate the dead. So he's like the very first uh, zombie, like kind of mm-hmm. king of the zombies. Mm-hmm. And it's chaos and stuff. And they're running through like ancient yeah. times. And then the, the last story in the one shot is uh, ninjas versus kaiju. So, so we got some <laughs> giant monsters in there. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it's always love a good too, kaiju story. Uh, heck yeah! I, it, too bad they couldn't yeah. move you up a little bit and get you around Halloween. You know, it would have perfect marketing. But uh, hey, glad glad they were able to get you out there. You know, um, uh, one of the problems that 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 we find, our, you know, our guys here is, um, you know, being able to find out about some of these things because they're sometimes they're not well marketed. And I know SourcePoint has done a pretty good job for you. Um, but you know, there's a lot of creators out there that have struggled and they've had to really self promote. So I guess my question is before you got to this point, did you do a lot of self promotion or how did you, you know, how did you get started before you got to, you know, basically, you know, establishing a benchmark book with source, uh, source point. So just to kind of put it into perspective, I bought like 500 comics come out into stores like every month. So it's really hard to like, kind of, breakthrough and Absolutely. with with cover of darkness uh we were like 185 on the sales charts um so you know not not the best but but not the worst either and yeah. it it was a lot of uh i built my own email list um for of comic book stores just like googling like city by city like painstakingly um and then i also uh printed out a, a poster that i mailed to uh, like 100 comic book stores the kind of the biggest ones uh you know, with a handwritten letter <laughs> asking them. Wow. And I, I don't know really? why I did handwritten. I thought it would mean yeah. more, <laughs> but it was, it was more rid- personal. It was ridiculously time consuming. <laughs> uh, just, uh, you know, yeah. with the, the poster had a picture of the, of the comic and, you know, the hand yeah. letters had, you know, bring in the book. I think your customers will like this. And, uh, and I think that really did went a long way. Yeah. It must've worked. Like I said, you know, I, I, I really try to scan the shelves and, um, you know, I, I, you know, obviously, you know, the big two are out there and, and they get a little bit of my money, but I always try to make sure that I leave space for some of the more original indie stuff that's out there because, um, I, you know, reading a novel is great, but I mean, we're, we're in a day and age where we have, you know, uh, basically the novelization uh, becoming like a graphic novel. And um, so it's, you know, reading on words is, you know, nothing but words is great. But when, when you have talented groups putting pictures to it, you know, create momentum, you know, creating a storyline, that's pretty incredible. So um, just, you know, kudos to you for, for keeping at it, really working, working and, uh, and finally, you know, getting your foot in the door. Yeah. <clears throat> now, um, you know, so I, I was saying I'd read the, the trade paperback that we got um, sent over. So I got a sneak peek at that. Um, but what I was loving was like seeing your different takes on some of these monsters uh, between you and, and uh, MJ figuring out the, the looks and, and uh, these backstories and stuff. Um, what of all of those ones that you did in this first um, series for uh, Cover of Darkness, what was your favorite one like of coming up with their unique backstory? Um, well, I can't take all the credit. I have a co-writer on the book. Uh, her name is Chris Cam. And... Uh... She put together this uh, Viking werewolf story uh, that I really enjoy, and it's 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 pretty fun. It's just kind of a new take on it, and it just it just feels right. Like a lot of the things that we tried to do with the series kind of make sense. Like with the Atlantean Frankenstein, it's like, well, who would have the technology to reanimate a corpse? Well, maybe the Atlanteans would. And you know, werewolves and Vikings they just kind of go together, like you know, chocolate and peanut butter. It just it it works, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, with the berserkers, I mean, they had like actual like the berserkers within the uh, Vikings. So I guess yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite. And then uh, I, one of my favorite panels, which kind of threw me for a loop, I was laughing, even though it was like a tense moment, was when uh, one of the shape shifting uh, guys turned into a giant red eyed giraffe. <laughs> was throwing up. What, what were some of the uh, your favorite things that uh, that MJ tossed over to you from you know the art? I did like there's a, a sh- one of our so within our family of characters there's two shapeshifters and so when they encounter the the monsters you have these ants animal monster fights and we have in issue two there's a gorilla fighting a werewolf 
and the <laughs> the werewolf bites the gorilla in the face and his eyeball pops out and i didn't write this in the story but mj has this eyeball just like flopping around throughout the whole fight and i was like oh man that, that's gruesome <laughs> I remember, I, I remember flipping over to that and I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> this got serious. <laughs> it was it's always funny when somebody level. loses an eye, right? Yes. <laughs> well, that's got to, I mean, that's the exciting thing about working in comics is, you know, you work with collaborators and uh, they bring something new to the table that you might not have thought of. So it's, that's exciting. Yeah. It's been a blast working with MJ. He does everything digitally with his finger. He doesn't use a pencil or a stylus. Oh. So oh, it has like a kind of gritty kinetic energy uh, to the artwork that I think fits the subject matter really nicely. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. How did, how did you get connected with MJ? Was that the, uh, was it uh, source pro- source point brought you guys together or. No. So we started working on this book like four years ago and I uh, hit the, the kind of convention circuit in 2019 pretty hard. I did like 18 shows that year all across North America. And so the connection with source point was through doing those shows. I just, they do a lot of shows. Like they've done up to like 70 shows in a year. Like they'll have multiple teams Dang. on a weekend. And so I kept on running into them and I'd go and I'd pitch in my book and, you know, and then at, after a while they're like, well, you don't need to pitch your book. And it's like, we're going out for drinks. Do you want to come with us? And it's like, okay. So <laughs> just kind of get to know the people there. Nice. <laughs> right. And, uh, and with MJ, I had found him on Instagram, actually. He has like a mm. quarter of a million followers on there. And wow. so a lot of people in comics, cause he hasn't done a lot of comic book work, um, might like not know his name, but then they'll like look at his artwork and they're like, wait a minute, I know this guy. And then they'll like pull up their mm. phone and it's like, I'm following him. So mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of works. Yeah. And, um, how did you get connected with Chris? Was, uh, is that through this uh, convention circuit as well? No, uh, Chris and I are cousins. Oh, and, well, there you yes. go. <laughs> so we grew up together or almost like brother and sister, honestly, like we, you know, spend every summer together, like every day, all summer. Um, and, um, uh, and I'd like, drive her nuts because she's a little bit older than me so i'd like go like she'd be you know uh spending the night at our house uh, when we were kids and i'd like go in there and like just throw nerf balls at her and like jump on her bed and like try and get her to like get up to come and like watch batman the animated (laughs) series with me or the x-men cartoon back in the 90s and and then she always loved to read and she's really into like paranormal uh romance and she's worked at like uh bookstores her entire life and written like novels Mm. and so it's like I brought her in uh, to this, and together we we crafted the story. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm gonna. So we can pause. see you basically terrorized your cousin, and so you know, you were able to somehow convince her to come work for you or work <laughs> yes. with you, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That. So, so, so you said yet that that you you really hit the, um, um, you know, the convention circuit pretty hard. Uh, did you, was it kind of a strategic thing? Like, did you know, what, did you say, okay, these are the cities that I think I got to hit or how, how did you, how did you figure that out? Cause that can be expensive. That th- yeah. Those are not cheap. So it was not very strategic at all. That was like my first <laughs> year, like really doing it. And uh, I quickly learned that not all conventions are equal to each other um i i planned out this tour of shows um i'd heard of like you know the wizard world conventions i thought oh they're the biggest they were not all the biggest especially in Uh some of the smaller cities like columbus ohio madison Mm -hmm. wisconsin austin texas i planned this like uh month-long road trip that i did uh just me and my van because i'm like you know my dad and i have a kid that plays (laughs) soccer so i have a minivan (laughs) And I set out, I was going to do four shows in four weeks. And I kind of just realized, like, if I keep on, like, spending all my money on, like, eating out in hotels, I'm not going to come back with anything because these shows were really small. And Mm. so I picked up a mattress and threw it in the back of the van (laughs) and went on a bit of a diet. And, uh, you know, I made it through the trip (laughs) and uh, and I came back with a few dollars in my pocket. It was rough, man. you know, part of it kind of felt like, hey, it's, you know, kind of rock and roll. But it, uh, also it kind of felt like I was like that crazy guy down by the river, you know. So, <laughs> so and that's that's what I was going to. Matt, Matt, full, 
Yeah, Matt Foley in a van down by the yeah. river. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask you when you're talking about um, kind of hitting hitting the conventions. And sounds like you did a lot of kind of tedious manual work, sending out you know these advertisements and these you know kind of promos to the comic book shops and things like that. I was going to ask you, you know, with kind of that work in mind, and then. When the pandemic hit, you know, there was probably a lot less opportunities. So did that kind of force you more into like trying to do things uh, virtually and through the Internet? Or have you always kind of done both? Like and because we always try to we always try to touch on these types of things a little bit. The challenges to help people also get to where you are. So I guess where would you say that some of that value that you have found that value was it? Was it kind of all of it, or do you feel like both um, pounding the pavement adds certain aspects, and then the digital realm adds certain aspects? What do you, what would you say? So after like 2019, I had done all those shows. I quit my day job March 1st, 2020, with the plan to go out and do like a, a bunch more conventions, uh, and that did not work out very well because of the pandemic canceling mm. basically all the shows. Um, and so what I did, um, was I had remembered that there was at, at a show, uh, an eccentric man with like dark brown hair and a white lab coat had come up to, uh, my friend, uh, John Delaney's, um, table. And he was saying to John that he wanted to have a cartoon made about him and he wanted John to, to do some character designs. And so I had remembered that. And then like, a couple of weeks later, I was having lunch with John and, and I'm like, what are you up to? And he's like, oh, I'm doing these character designs for that guy. And I was like, really? I didn't think that was legit. He's like, yeah, no, I, I looked him up and, uh, and this guy's for real. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so after all those conventions got canceled, I remembered what he was saying he wanted his animated show to be about. So I just wrote on spec without anybody asking me uh, a screenplay for an animated show, a pilot um, based off of the cartoon that he had described. And I sent it to him and he loved it so much that he commissioned me to write uh, 10 more screenplays wow. for him. And wow. uh, yeah, that kind of saved my bacon in 2020. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. Dang. So just kind of, and I, I think uh, that's been the story that I've heard from a lot of people is just kind of taking opportunities that were there um, that they hadn't gone after. Uh, like a lot of my artist friends have been working in like video game design or doing storyboards and things like that when comics kind of slowed down a bit kind of picking up mm. these extra gigs that are around that you don't normally chase after if you're, you know, making money going to shows and stuff. Yeah. I think, I think that makes right. sense. You know, it's kind of one of those typical, you don't know, put all your eggs into one basket. If you're branched out and doing different types of work, like, like you said, and I think, but I think, you know, laying that groundwork and getting, trying to get your name out there. And, and again, those hard times when, like you said, you maybe went on a diet, you didn't feel like you needed and things like that. It, it you got you got to connect with people and and you develop some even if it wasn't a relationship builder at the time like you said sometimes you think about other folks that you've met previously and then you know maybe can reach out to them and that builds your network of of uh, potential right yeah and I think like it's uh, like as a creator it's important to realize that not everyone has to love your stuff. Like for, for me, it was at source point press, there was a, a person that was working there that was like manager of the warehouse. And so he wasn't the editor in chief. He wasn't, you know, the person that handled uh, submissions, but he was a champion of the book and he kind of pushed it up and, and got the others to read it. And that's, that's what ultimately got us this publishing deal. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, <clears throat> so, um, I, I know you've been like busy doing all this stuff, right? Like pushing uh, this book and getting the game developed and you got, uh, we were talking uh, offline beforehand. You mentioned, you know, the future of, you're talking about working on the future of um, cover of darkness. Do you, have you had time to like check out other comics? And if so, like, uh, have you been checking out other horror comics? What what are some of the ones you've been, you've been reading? Uh, I have been reading uh, stray dogs. I enjoy that one. Uh, it's pretty cool. I got to meet uh, Tone Rodriguez. We were uh, together at a show, and so I wanted to see what he was working on. And uh, uh, Winchester House uh, Mysteries uh, from Source Point Press. Uh, 
Uh, it's uh, written by Josh Warner, who's actually the editor in chief there, and it's yeah. a pretty cool book too. Awesome. So Winchester, Mister. So Paul, we have to add that one to the queue, huh? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Are you already reading those, Paul? Yeah, the Source Point oh, Press. I mean, so you know, like again, you know, um, I, you know, George's book here being the really the first Source uh, Point Press book that I picked up, but since then you know a lot of other things and it, and it, you know I, I would say george the you know the good thing about the success that you had you know at, you know to whatever level it's been um and hopefully hopefully a lot but um <clears throat> i you know i think it brings attention to other titles too which is which is a great thing about you know a you know a comic book line i mean that's obviously that's how dc and marvel have done it right people will pick things up just because it's got that brand on it and you know, there's other companies, Aftershock and all this, that are coming out, and uh, you see stuff starting to really kind of get a foothold. So it's it's good to know that that uh, you know these other companies are able to put out some really good you know works of art and get noticed. Um, because we've heard about how tough it is. You know, we've talked to a lot of creators, and they've talked about you know again how much self promotion they had to do, and just really how they had to really you know just grind at it, grind at it. You know, at some point they you know they they might have done a Kickstarter or some other type of, you know, method to, to kind of get their project uh, completed. And um, it was such a sense of accomplishment. But if you're able to break through and, uh, and uh, you know, you're able to get with a publisher who can help you out and help kind of amplify your voice, that, that, that sort of validation that everything you've done up to this point has worked. One thing that was really cool is that uh, SourcePoint Press is uh, the sponsor of the Fan Expo conventions, mm-hmm. which okay. is like now they're like the biggest convention company around and uh cover of darkness was on the badges uh on a lot of shows it makes it a little bit easier to sell too when i'm at a convention and i'm just like hey my my book's on your badge there oh okay i'll I'll stop and talk to you yeah that's pretty awesome yeah i've I've gone to some of those uh like these little local ones like you know i'm in the chicago area so you know every now and then a couple times a year they're like in northwest indiana you know, they'll have one at their, like, like at their, um, you know, like n- not really the uh, flea market type place, but kind of like the park district thing, you know, you go there and there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of, um, you know, big names there, but you've got creators, you know, uh, you know, probably like you 10 years ago, right? These guys are like giving their stuff away. They've got posters and magnets and little things. And they're like, you know, all these little bookmarks and everything. They're like, yeah, no, I'll take it. Hey, you want me to sign it? Yeah. Heck yeah. I'll take it. You know, the guy will sign it. And I'm just like, this is awesome. And he's like, you don't even know who I am. I'm like, no, but this is great. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, and I, I mean, that's been some of the best stuff that I've read too. You know, it's cause it's just so original. It's just, you know, somebody, somebody was able to somehow come up with a story that hadn't been done, you know, pretty much like what you've done. I mean, people have put monsters together, but, but your book was unique. It really was. And so for that, like, again, you know, I give you all the, all the credit in the world. Thank you. I really uh, wanted to spend a lot of time with the monsters because like, I'm a big horror fan and I hate it when you watch a, like a scary movie and it's all about like the final girl. And it's like, I'm here for the monster. Like what's going on here? <laughs> and so we, yeah. we, we split our time. Like, so in every issue you get like half of the book is dedicated to the monster and you get like a standalone monster origin story. Yep. Um, but hopefully if we do our job right, by the end of the series, you're kind of invested in the in our family characters and you want to know what happens next with them as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, nobody wants to be looking at their watch like, you know, when, when's somebody going to get killed around here? I mean, I've got dinner, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be a murder before the before my steak burns? I mean. <laughs> no, I I love the, uh, the unique um, histories, the origin stories that you guys are adding to some of these monsters. I mean, obviously you're you're stuck um, in some things, um, but like especially the Frankenstein, Atlantean steampunk Frankenstein, and stuff like that. It's just uh, it was it was really fun to um, see those origin stories and like how they all eventually you know we, we find them you know up against the family. So yeah, I, I, I've been <laughs> I loved that when I was reading the trade paperback. Are are all these monsters featured in the game? Just about all of them, or is it more the a little bit of monsters, mostly the family? Like how, how did that work out? It's mostly the monsters. So you're trying okay. to build the strongest monster army. <laughs> so that's that's kind uh, of the idea of the game. So yeah, the vampires are like a, a ten point card. So you you want to get like. <laughs> four of those and uh you can we have the shapeshifter card though which is like a bone a special card which will be any 
any character you want. So you can you can actually That'd get up to nice. six of a kind, which will give you like a, nice. a huge score. And so and the like card the Joker. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, and like the card the, the card game is uh, it's it's safe to play with your whole family. Like you know the <laughs> you might not want to play the or you might not want to read Cover of Darkness the book to your you know five year old. It might you know traumatize them and then they'll start making monster <laughs> comics thirty years later. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the game you could play with them pretty safely, and, and it'll be alright. There's, there's no eyeballs <laughs> popping out in the game. No, <laughs> you'll end up living in a van down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, but yeah, so I mean, key, oh, oh uh, sorry. Go ahead, Ben. I was just gonna say, um, uh, I don't, I can't recall if we already said it on on here yet. Because I know we're talking about it offline earlier. Uh, the Kickstarter's um, running through when. November eighth, November eighth, and yeah. uh, we'll put the link in the show notes and stuff, and in the uh, the description for those folks yeah. watching on YouTube. Uh, we'll get the links over there. Um, any, I'm uh, sorry, Paul. Uh, that's why. No, no, to touch I, on. I was going <laughs> to me- no, I was actually going to mention the Kickstarter. I was, I was going to, oh, I yeah. got it on my other screen here. I was mm-hmm. going to say it, it looks like you're getting close, so that's really good news. That's great to see. Yeah, well, we're over eighty percent funded right now, so I'm I'm confident we're going to make our goal for sure. Yep. It'd be nice to get over it though. We've got some really uh, fun stretch goals uh, planned. Uh, we have ten pages of uh, pinups or like alternative covers that'll be added to the book. Uh, we have artwork done by Carrie Nord, who worked on like Wonder Woman and Conan the Barbarian, uh, Ali Garza from Supergirl, Tim Laddie from Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles. Uh, so they've. Their art will be will be included if we hit our first stretch goal, and then our second stretch goal is concept art, which is pretty cool to see, like kind of behind the scenes, you know, MJ's like original drawings, and some of them we didn't use, and so like we have like our creature from the Black Lagoon character has like a mermaid tail, and so it's like oh we didn't go with that, but it's kind of neat to see those <laughs> yeah, things those mashups, yeah, oh. outtakes <laughs> stuff on the cutting room floor, I love it, yeah. I, I saw that one of the stretch goals was a video um, where you like kind of do a director's commentary, if you will. Can you tell us a little bit more about that one? That stretch yeah, goal? Uh, so the plan is to uh, go through the book uh, myself and Chris Cam and hopefully get uh, our artist on there, MJ Hiblin. Maybe we'll have like a moderator kind of <laughs> keep this thing yeah. somewhat organized and we'll just record <laughs> a, a call where we'll go through the book kind of page by page. And, you know, every page has a story. So, I think that would be really interesting. And I actually uh, stole that idea from another creator that was doing the same thing for their book. But I'm like, that's, that's cool. I'd watch that. You know? Uh, you so know, you'll get, and they were stealing right. it from the people like the DVDs <laughs> back in the day. And, <laughs> yeah. That's all, yeah. That's awesome. That'd be fun. That would be fun to hear. Like, like, especially if you could like, I don't know. I imagine like if you could read the book and you, and at the same time, it's kind of like a, I mean, a, a more, you know, serious version of mystery science or something. You guys are talking over the, the pages and like, this is what's going on here and how we came up with this. Mm-hmm. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it'll be cool too, because like, you know, Chris and I, we jammed on things together, but you know, she wrote her sections and I wrote my sections and then we'll kind of go back and forth and like do like the, the second and third draft on each other's work and just kind of combine like that. So I'm sure I'll learn some things of like where, you know, she came up with certain ideas and, and it'll be fun to do that. Great yeah. idea. Awesome. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Well, very uh, cool. Well, thanks so much for, uh, for coming on the show. We loved hearing about, uh, the, the trade and, uh, and, and helping you with the Kickstarter. So, uh, yeah, just thanks so much and congratulations to everything you've accomplished. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's, this has been a blast. Yeah. Everybody make sure you, George. Yeah, make sure you check the links in the in the show notes and in the um, in the video description. Uh, click over there. You got uh, some time left to still get over and fund this Kickstarter. Uh, let's get to those stretch goals uh, for Cover of Darkness and get this uh, so we can get this. I want to I want to check this game out. So I'm gonna head over to Kickstarter after this myself and uh, and drop on there. All right. Well, thanks again for for joining us on this episode. It was great getting a chance to to meet George and and hear about. Uh, all, all the great work he's doing out there. So, you know, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell so we can keep bringing you content like this. And we'll see you on the next one.